The Lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become, and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. The Lord was grieved that he had made man on the earth, and his heart was filled with pain. So the Lord said, I will wipe mankind whom I have created from the face of the earth, men and animals, and creatures that move along the ground, and birds of air, for I am grieved that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Thank you, Jerry. It's great to see everybody today. I'll admit I struggled with this lesson. Humanity, I mean, really, where do you go with that? So, on the screen, one of those is human. How's that? <laughs> We've got a lot of good things coming up this week. Uh, Ralph is going to be here. That's, I tried to introduce him last year as Dr. Ralph Gilmore with all these credentials and degrees and everything else, and he says, I'm just Ralph. Okay, but you're Ralph that knows a whole lot of stuff. He says, but I'm still just Ralph, and so that's who's going to be here this weekend, and I think it's going to be a great time and just being able to learn about some of the things that go on with our generation and how to be able to relate with some other people. And maybe we have a struggle with that on, on both sides. And so I'm excited about that happening and I'm anxious for that to come. So humanity, it all started long ago. God created the world and he created and you see the order in Genesis of all the different things he created and he gets down to the last day, he creates animals and animals are physical, animals. But then he decides to create human in his likeness. And I think that's why he creates human as different from other things. I mean, he could have done a whole lot better just having a good dog, right? Because a dog will always obey what you want, and a dog will always do. They'll always come home. They'll chase the rabbits and everything else, but they're going to come back home at night. They'll protect you. They're a good companion. Apparently, God wanted something else. So it wasn't just something comfortable, just something nice. He wasn't just decorating a world and going, well, I think this would look good over here, and you know, this would look good over here. We put birds in the air and fish in the sea and animals on the ground, and let's make humans. But why? I mean, it looked pretty good already, right? Because we go far away from cities to go to places that look absolutely gorgeous. Very seldom we take pictures of the downtown section of any city and say, wow, isn't that beautiful? So why did God create humans? See, there's one thing that human has that nothing else has, and that is the capacity to show God. It is the vessel by which God could place himself. And I think he was looking far ahead to when he would need to come to earth, and can you imagine God coming back as a cat? I mean, it's just, I mean they're, they're cute, but... That just isn't going to do it. And so in order to show who he is, he created human. That's why. In his image, after his likeness, now God is not physical, so that isn't how he created human as, oh, well, they're flesh. Well, so are dogs. So is every other animal. But he created us as different. We have personality. God has personality. God's not physical. God's spirit. Can God come in physical form? Absolutely. He can come any way he likes. But human form shows God the best. Human form shows God in our life the best as well. And we are able to take advantage of that more than any other place in any other time. It didn't take very long before you see wasn't working well. Um, the passage that Jared read to us in, in Genesis 6, I mean only six chapters in and already every intention and thought 
of his heart is only evil continually. Wow. That's pretty bad. God, are you sure you wanted to make human? He says, no, I did not. And he relented, said, I am sorry I made him. But there was one guy, Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. And this is one of the most powerful passages because one guy who finds favor in the eyes of the Lord, one guy who saw here's what human should be, could be, here's what can happen to us, one guy changed the face of the world. God was ready to wipe it out, ready to destroy it, ready to get rid of the humans. So was Noah saved from humanity? No. He was saved from evil. He was saved from an evil world. And I think that's what we have to recognize in all of this. It wasn't that Noah, because Noah is human. And he gave the chance to start again and for God to be seen in human form. That somehow God is reflected in Noah's life. God is reflected in his son's life. And so as God started over again, the capacity for his divine being able to be seen in that is just incredible. I think as we look at that, it's one of the things that makes us the most. In Romans, he describes his creation. He says, I made it so that you would know who I was. He says, for what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and things that have been made so that they are without excuse. So God made creation so that he could show who he is. His eternal power, his invisible attributes, his divine nature are clearly perceived in what he made. And that's why it's so beautiful. That's why it is so coordinated. That's why it all comes together. Our clothes clash. Nothing in nature clashes. Why is that? I've always wondered that. Why doesn't it clash? But we can't even hardly get ourselves dressed in the morning. It's just the way that God knows how to make nature, and he says, this is a reflection of me. This is a reflection of what it looks like. And so God is able to say that, but it was not complete enough. So not only did God show in a flower his nature, not only did God show in a kitty cat the softness of God, not only did God show in a huge mountain how solid and secure he can be, he said, I want you to see what personality looks like. And so creation without human was not enough to define God. And therefore, he, re he is revealed in human form in us. If you think about the disciples as John writes his book and he's trying to figure out in the gospel how to explain Jesus Christ and he comes down to verse 14. He says, and the word became flesh. Yeah. God became human, and the Word became flesh, and we have seen His glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. What a tremendous thing for Him to say, I saw the glory of God in Jesus Christ. What a great thing that is to be able to realize that. John came to know God in the flesh. Now, I think it was pretty normal, but nobody really saw him or noticed him or anything like that. I mean, he looked like every other guy until you got to know who he was as a person. And as a person, John was so impressed. He said, I have seen the glory of God because nobody else looks like that. I just want to share with you some scriptures today and some ideas of what happens. Isn't that great? Now, you're not going to see that in Arizona, I realize, so that's why that is water. I didn't know if you guys had ever seen that before. But just water and light, and God puts it together, and what an incredible thing. Ground up rock. Yeah, we like ground up rock, especially when it's kind of white and just really, really fine. And 
waves lap on the shore. And we say, wow, that's beautiful, God. It is. He made it to be beautiful. You know what? He made you to be beautiful too. Even more than this. Because this can only give you a little taste of it. But what God is able to do in your life is truly incredible. As he says, I will shine in you. What a great thing it is to be able to realize that and to see that. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, he goes back and Paul's talking here about creation. He says, for the God who said, let light shine out of darkness. Yeah, Genesis, okay. Let light shine out of darkness has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifest in our body. Creation lets the light shine in the darkness, and we are the lamp. He says it's like his treasure is put in jars of clay, and the jars of clay were very, very fragile. I mean, you had to be very, very careful with them because he talks about all of these hard times. It isn't as if God made everything easy, but even in all of those difficulties, he says, isn't that what expresses how strong we are? He says we were afflicted, confused, persecuted, struck down. He says, but it didn't crush us. It didn't make us despair. It didn't make us feel forsaken. And we are not destroyed. We carry on because we have the glory of God. We are vessels that hold God's spirit. We are created in his image and we let his image shine in us. What an incredible opportunity. So there's a store. I don't know if we even have one. It's called the Container Store. They sell nothing. They do a great job of selling nothing. Because you can go in there and you can buy a box of nothing. Seriously. And that's what they sell is a box of nothing. Because when you carry it out, every box you carry out is empty. And that's all it is, is a store full of containers. It, it, that's it. So why would you ever go in and buy containers? I mean, who, and, and different colors of containers? Would you like to be in a store and shop for nothing? I love it. I know. <laughs> It's kind of crazy. I think, well, what, what could you put in this? What could you get out of this? But I think that's what he's trying to, I mean, we like going to places. This would be so organized. Now, I don't know about the organized part, but I like all the colors, and I like the, do you want a store that sells nothing but containers of nothing? Well, okay. So what is the point? The point is you put valuable stuff in them. Right? That's why you have a container store that sells boxes of nothing so that what is the most valuable to you can now be put into a very good, exclusive place. I'm kind of worried about her. I think she's going to start preaching here in a minute. Just make sure she doesn't get the microphone, okay? <laughs> so you've got all of these containers, and you've got this store, and you've got this place, and here they are. So I've got a couple of containers today, all right? This is not from the container store. It's from my container store called Walmart, <laughs> just so you know. What would you put in your container? Well, there's all kinds of things you can put in your container. And I think basically that's what happens. We are empty vessels, and God made us as human, and different things can be put inside. And so one of the things that gets put inside of containers a lot of times is the things we just talked about. Sometimes things are hard, and that's what happens. 
and it rattles and it bangs and it's not easy and so things are very very difficult and they get put into our life not because we wanted them there but because that's just the way it is and so containers are containers and hard things get into our life and it just happens to go that way yeah I knew I was going to make a mess that's too much but on top of that there are times when there are also some really good things that get put into our life and so there are things that are very sweet things that are very pretty things that are beautiful and so you can put all kinds of things into sometimes into your life and with those things still looks like a good life right things are good you put in what's sweet you put in what's good you put in all the things that we need in life and it's just really great to be able to see that and so each one of these things come in I should have gotten smaller strawberries that's all I can say <laughs> sorry you get commentary with us sometimes <laughs> But that's about the best you got, is there are some that are great blessings that you can put into this container as well. And so even though there are hard things, the hard things are eventually going to go away, right? They do with time. You know ice melts in Arizona. So they go away with time, and so they don't get to stay in there. And there are other things that we put in. Sometimes there are blessings, and we need to make it sweet and so do you have strawberries with your sugar I mean sugar with your strawberries <laughs> still looks good right and so this is doing good this is still a good life right so we can put these things into a good life and here we are Things are looking great. We have all done good things. And there are blessings that come from God and there are blessings in knowing other people. And everything is good. However, at the time when we allow something else to come into our life, it makes things worse. And so if we just add just a little bit of dirt not a lot it's just a little bit right still looks pretty good right well especially if you're sitting in the back I mean <laughs> you can't see that far anyway it's a small jar and that's what happens there gets to be a little bit of dirt so as life happens and things go on, we understand that life tries to fill us up and we're able to see this great thing happen. And as you get older and you're mature, you can look back and see your life. Looks okay? You say, yeah. Sometimes you have to coax them, I know. <laughs> well, what happens when you add a little bit of water to this one? what happened it's all the same stuff now there's ice in it and there's a little bit of sugar the sugar should make up for the dirt right enough sugar and dirt tastes okay don't your kids eat dirt ask them they think it's good right so why would we not want this one it doesn't look the same it doesn't turn out the same it doesn't look anywhere close to the same why not because what you've got here is a difference in just one ingredient 
That's it, right? And I think that's what happens when we put the wrong thing in our life. You just add a little bit of sin. It changes all of it. It changes the whole thing. It's just got a little bit. Now, I'm worried that you guys will think this is chocolate and actually like it, but <laughs> it's not chocolate, okay? Just, just wanted you to know that. But I think here's what the whole point of this exercise is. We have the chance to be containers for God. And we have the chance to put in whatever we choose. Because as human, we have the capacity for greatness and for great disaster. So as you think about this, what makes us human? Does it work? So we have the chance to interact with our world by our own selfishness, by the guy giving the girl his sandals, because she has none, by the guy holding the umbrella, He's getting wet. Well, you shouldn't do that. You're getting wet. Why would you do that? Because there's something about being human that gives us the capacity to love and to care and to have compassion and to take care of, and that is a reflection of God. You see, we could all try to win the race, but why would you stop and pick up somebody just because they've collapsed? You're not going to win then. Oh, yes, you will. Oh, yes, you will, because that's the whole point. That's what makes human a reflection of God. So let me just share some scriptures real quick with you as you begin to look at what this means. James 4. What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that you, your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and do not obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Why would we do that? Why wouldn't we make ourselves an enemy of God? Well, all they're doing is trying to get ahead. But there are two ways. You can either let God exalt and seek him... Or you can try and do it yourself. We think we're smart enough. We think we're fast enough. We think we're ahead of everybody else. And we can prove it. We can get it ourselves. We don't need you, God. And we end up like dirty water. And we fight and we quarrel and we kill because we don't know how else to get it. And it destroys us. As humans, we are not pretty. It is not a good situation at all. But the other side in Second Peter chapter 1, his divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue. And here's the things you would put in this human container. Supplement your faith with virtue, your virtue with knowledge, your knowledge with self-control, your self-control with steadfastness and steadfastness with godliness, godliness with brotherly affection, brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind and has forgotten he was cleansed from his former sins. It's the way you go about it. 
the way you go about being human. And unfortunately, sometimes what happens is we say, oh, that's human nature. And what part do we say is human nature? The bad part, right? Every time we've messed up and we've done something really bad, well, that's just human nature. No, he made you to be empty. He made you to be clear so that he could fill you with himself so that you could be the reflection, so that you could be to the praise and glory of his grace, as Ephesians 1 tells us. 2 Timothy 3 is just like that. But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having such appearance of godliness but denying its power, avoid such people. Really? Shouldn't we try and save them? Shouldn't we go after them? Shouldn't we say, well, you know what? We'll take some of our clear and you can just pour some of your dirty into us and you know what happens we're all the same color then because everything is dirty he says you cannot take somebody that is that selfish that is that self-centered that is so much trying to get what they want by abuse and by control and not by allowing God he says it turns them into something really, really ugly. And so human can be one of the worst things when driven to just leave it to do whatever it wants. He says you've got to stay away from those people. That isn't being human, that's just cruelty. And we can be the most cruel, vicious animal on the planet when we set our mind to it. It's all in the way you go about it. It isn't that you can't have what you want, but it's about letting God be the one that lifts, letting be, God be the one that blesses, rather than you saying, I will get it myself. Last one is Galatians 5. The works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissension, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. And I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Works of the flesh. What does he mean, works of the flesh? It's by doing whatever your flesh wants. Don't you know where it's going to lead? He said, never produces what you want. They don't even get into the kingdom. They don't have any place in it. And their container that they have had from God that was so beautiful is now completely miserable. And they've made themselves so miserable. But the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. There are some things we say no to because they make us ugly. They make us corrupted. They make us where we are the ones who's dirty. And God didn't create us to be like that. You're new from the container store. God made you great. God made you beautiful. And Jesus is able to take away any of the dirt or any of the sin or any of the things that go wrong in our life. He is so able to do that. And we have to allow this fruit to be able to grow. If you had these things in your life, wouldn't it be a happy life? That you had a life where you love and, and, and are loved by other people, where you have joy, where you have patience with other people and other people have patience with you, you know, that usually goes on both sides. What happens if the kindness and the goodness and the faithfulness and the gentleness, what a great thing it is to have that. And those things are produced in your life by the Spirit of God who fills you. 
You see, when we repented of our sins, Jesus can take out all the dirt. We repent, we're baptized into Christ, and he says, because of my blood and my death on a cross, I'll take away any dirt that you have, and none of it is there anymore, and form a new covenant with you, so that you are a new creation. And we put these things in our life, and we allow this fruit to grow. And God is happy, and God is revealed, and God is shown. And people are, how did you do that? He says, I just let God have what he wanted. So it's just a matter of surrendering to God. Maybe you need to do that today. What shape is your container? How's it going? Maybe it's time to change it. Come on, we stand and sing.